Hi, it's Katie Seriani Bull. It's Katie Stories number 46, part two. I said I'd be back. Yeah, just minutes later, I'm sitting here and I'm gonna keep going. So with that leaked liberal letter, um, came another little part I wanna read to you. And again, we won't attach, we're not gonna freak out, but I want you to be prepared. Along with that provided roadmap, the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor, one that would change the face of Canada forever, alter the life of Canadians. Uh, committee, and, and it basically says that what we were told in order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale, that the federal government was going to offer Canadians a total debt relief. This is how it works. Federal government will offer to eliminate all personal debts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc., which all funding will be provided to Canada by the IMF under what will become known as the World Debt Reset Program. I'm not sure what the IMF is, so I'm just going to keep going. In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. The individual would also have to agree to partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination schedule, which would provide the individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living, even under a full lockdown, through the use of photo identification, referred to as Canada's health pass. Remember when that was a conspiracy theory? Mm -hmm. Committee members asked who would become the owner of the forfeited property and assets in that scenario, and what would happen to lenders or financial institutions, we were simply told the World Debt Reset Program will handle all of the details. Several committee members also questioned what would happen to individuals if they refused to participate in the World Debt Reset Program or the health pass or the vaccination schedule. And the answer we got was very troubling. Essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we came up with a plan to ensure that would never happen. We were told it was in the individual's best interest to participate. When several committee members pushed relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refused would first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely, and that over a short period of time, as more Canadians transitioned into the debt forgiveness programs, the ones who refused to participate would be deemed as a public safety risk and be re relocated into isolation facilities. I would call that more um, a concentration camp. Once in those facilities, they'd be given two options, participate in the debt forgiveness reprogram and be released, or stay indefinitely in the isolation facility under the classification of a serious public health risk and have all their assets seized. So as you can imagine, after hearing all of this, it turned into quite the heat. Okay, I'm not gonna read that part. So again, I'm gonna say freedom. We have a charter of rights and freedom. And what freedom means is the lack of coercion, like forcing, coercion, punishment, and consequences. So what I wanna show you next is, this is really wild. There's a funny little guy I follow in Kentucky in the States. And yeah, he's a bit woo-woo and he's a bit out there. And some of the stuff he's, you know, he's said is gonna happen hasn't. And, but I like him. I, I know a good heart when I hear one. And so he posted this. He found this. And this is mind-blowing speech by Robert Welch in 1958. And these were an, the insider plans to destroy America. And so let's just say Canada as well. And just, just listen. I'm sorry if you can't see my screen. I, I'm going to try and play with my phone so you can see this. Okay, now just have a listen. It's going to take about two minutes. Uh, here are the news for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Trillions, right? Trillions Two, of dollars going out. Higher and then much higher taxes. Much higher Three, taxes. Big tight tax hikes. increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher yeah. taxes. We haven't had a budget in Canada for Four, two years. Wild inflation of our currency. Five, Big inflation is coming, guys. Of prices, wages, and materials. You hear this? To combat inflation. That's going to be this summer. Six, supply breakdown. Greatly increased 
socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. Right, every activity. Be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and Bigger government, and they're trying to pass the Supreme Court in the states right now. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state line. Yeah, and they want to make Washington a state on its own, of Puerto Rico. To have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system. Yep. Leading to complete federalization of our public education. Big time. They're infiltrated Nine, in the states and it's in Canada too. Into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare. The beauties and In this the case, instead of warfare, of it's peace. fear of this virus. Fear of killing someone you love. Of course. And ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government, which amount to a peaceful yes. surrender. The willingness. Of the rest we of all the want to be good. World. That route. Wow, eh? So, yeah, if you want to watch that, I do have that on my Facebook. Um, how does that look? It's called all patriots and you'll have to scroll down a little bit but he says where you can find some more information and find out who that man was and then lastly i just want to read you something oh i kind of wanted to read you this but i'll save that you really need to see this this is the mural the big mural on the wall in the united nations security council and this was just posted two days ago by someone it's freaky, okay? And it's going to mirror kind of what I just showed you, the plans for overtaking. This is the UN, and I'm going to pull this up in a sec for you. City is the United Nations headquarters, which was built in 1945 and financed largely by John D. Rockefeller. Inside UN headquarters is an ominous meditation room. The custodian of the meditation room is Lucis Trust Company. At one time, the Lucis Trust was located at 666 United Nations Plaza and was formally named Lucifer Publishing Company. The Rockefeller-funded UN Meditation Room is 33 feet long and 18 feet wide. 18 feet is 6 plus 6 plus 6. The small, dimly lit, windowless room was built in the shape of a pyramid that is laying on its side. At the center of the room is a four foot high black casket shaped stone slab, which weighs 6.5 tons and is extremely magnetic and rests on a concrete pillar. The pillar descends beneath the floor into the bedrock and taps into the earth's hyperdimensional energies to induce a state of altered consciousness. Okay, now this is really the important. Meditation Watch this. Room is the United Nations Security Council chamber. This is the emergency the UN, room the UN, China, Russia, the Cuba. Meet when the worst violation, peace. human human violation rates in the world. The they sit on. Even though Israel has over 200 uninspected nuclear weapons and has violated dozens of resolutions, no sanctions are ever imposed because of the United States veto powers. Notice the giant mural that towers over the Security Council room. The central focus of the UN mural is the phoenix bird that has risen. The phoenix bird is a symbol of Lucifer. Egyptians believe that the phoenix symbolized a god who rose to heaven in the form of a morning star like Lucifer after his fire immolation of death and rebirth. Notice that the phoenix bird is not standing above his own ashes. He is standing above his old skin. Like a snake, he has shed his old skin and is revealing himself as God at the center of the mural. At the top left, there is a church steeple without a cross. The missing cross symbolizes the death of Christianity. Below, a woman receives the rays of the sun god while the man in front of her plays Pan's flute. To their right are two pyramid symbols and people joined together by a long blue serpent-like claw. 
Below the risen phoenix, a sword is driven through a dragon beast. This represents the killing of all beliefs and religions that depicted Lucifer as a beast. Hence, all the churches The new world closed, religion worships right? him as beautiful. Behind the phoenix, the ghostly figures of the walking dead are stepping into a void. They symbolize depopulation. On the right panel, the pale horse from the book of Revelation is the bringer of death to humanity through weapons, hunger, and disease. The man is releasing him. The chained black man represents slavery, while the top panel of the mural shows a technologically advanced white race who control industry, art, and science. In this post-apocalyptic mural, the military man standing on the tail of the beast represents worldwide military power. He tips his helmet to the elite who are climbing out from underground cities where they safely hid from the apocalypse. Major underground bunkers in the States. In the main oval team. panel above the phoenix bird, a woman is holding flowers. She is the bride in a wedding ceremony. Who are these newlyweds that are kneeling submissively beneath the serpent in the overhead tree? Could the newlyweds symbolize William and Kate? The serpent in human form is tempting the little girl Eve who accepts the apple. On the right side of the top panel, a reptilian green creature with scaly skin is dancing with a naked woman while musicians entertain him. The general message of the UN's Phoenix Rising mural is that humanity is stepping into a new Luciferic reality. Beneath this disturbingly prophetic mural, world leaders make global decisions that affect the lives of nearly 7 billion people. He's part of what's been wrong in America. There's a lot wrong. What's hard for most people to grasp is that our elected government leaders are involved in an apocalyptic scheme to enslave the masses under a world government dictatorship. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna put my camera back up here. Okay. So, um, yeah, wasn't that just a cheerful little piece, eh? But I tell you, it's gonna get worse. And I know at this point, I think a lot of you are getting fatigued a lot of people are questioning what's going on, but a lot of people still are, you know, cruising around, thinking everything's gonna be okay. That this vaccine's gonna be the big savior. So, I wonder if I have time. We're at 13 minutes. I'm gonna quickly read you something to help tie in what I just read you. This is someone I follow on Facebook. Now, she shared something um, publicly with her friends, that 30 years ago she had direct dealings with the Illuminati, the real deal. And she wants she wants to share something. Never forget who we stand with. We stand with humanity. We stand in God. The John D. Rockefeller Ma Masonic Creed. You know, really, the Masons, I don't know, they're sort of, I, I always thought that was not, not a bad thing, but it can also be a really negative, sort of a, have an evil undertone to it. We will keep their lives short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so they never see what's happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators, and sed sedatives in food and water as well as in the air. They'll be covered in poisons wherever they turn. The soft metals will make them lose their minds. We'll promise to find a cure for from our many funds, and yet we will give them more poison. Chemical poisons will be absorbed through the skin of idiots who believe certain hygiene and beauty projects presented by great actors and musicians will bring eternal youth to their faces and bodies. And through their thirsty and hungry mouths will destroy their minds and systems of eternal organs and reproduction. However, their children will be born as disabled and deformed, and we will hide this information. The poisons will be hidden in everything around them, in what they drink, eat, breathe, wear. We have to be 
ingenious in distributing the poisons because they can see far. We'll teach them that poisons are good with funny pictures and musical tones on TV. Those looking for them will be helpful. We'll enroll them to push our poisons. And, and just look at all, you know, how many kids are born now these days, not just with fetal alcohol, but with autism and, and how many kids have diabetes. I mean, just look at the food, the lies that have been about sugar, the sugar industries would, you know, claim that it wasn't that harmful. And they would put on these big these documentaries and then, you know, you find out that they've been funded by like these major Coca-Cola corporations. And again, and they're all with, um, like all of the propaganda going on in the left down in the States and all of that, be less white, you know, Coca-Cola. This is just all part of a massive propaganda machine to brainwash, and especially our youth. Uh, not to mention all of the confusion with gender um, that they want to propose up here in Canada too. There's a big protest going on this weekend about um, puberty blockers, about hormones that will block puberty. And in the States, they're already trying to pass a law the Democrats, the left, that parents will be arrested if they don't allow their children to have these. And, and there's no proof that they alter depression or anxiety, but there's major proof that it can cause humongous um, hormone imbalances and even cancer in later years. Uh, not to mention the confusion that nobody should be making these decisions until they're an adult that weren't we just put on this earth and born to love the body we're born in. And, and if there's some, something doesn't feel right, you know, to be loved and, and as you are until you're old enough to go through a bit of life experience and make decisions like that. So I'm gonna carry on here. We see the products are used in film and they get used to them and never know their true effect. When they give birth, they will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them that we're helping them. We will start earlier when their minds are young and target the children with what children love most, sweet things. When their teeth decay, we'll fill them with metals that kill their minds. Well, that's not really true. I think they've stopped using mercury for a long time. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, who wrote this or when it was written. So again, green salt, we won't attach. Uh, we'll make them docile and weak before us by our power. They'll grow depressed, slow, and obese. And when they come to us for help, we'll give them more poison. And don't you find that even right now with the drugs? Um, drug addiction, and then they go to methadone, and these doctors are getting really wealthy, and there's no plan. you got to get to the root of the problem. The only way out is through. But it's band-aid, band-aid, band-aid. And, and medical, they just, it's all about money. You follow the money. And, and greed massive wealth and power is never enough. Not that I know, right? I'm just, you know, well, most of us will never know what that's like, but we do know and we have read that things start to get really wacky. Like when, when there's an imbalance and someone has too much money and power, there's a, am I saying this right? A depravity, a depravity where, yeah. And, and there's a massive, we all know this too, right? It, this is true that people are quite aware that there's a billion dollar trafficking industry going on in our world right now with children and slavery. And no one's talking about it. It's all about this, this sickness, this disease and the cure for it. Um, we'll own both sides. We'll always hide our goal, but we'll continue our plan. They'll work for us. They'll prosper. We'll prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. So now we're talking like this is written by elites, the elites. Our blood must be pure because it is. We'll make them kill each other when they oppose us and separate from unity through dogma and religion. We'll control all aspects of their lives and tell them what to think and how. And that's the phones right now, right? Kids on their phones just... They're not learning to think for themselves anymore. Um, some of us adults are guilty on that. I could spend a little time off my phone too, and I'm trying. We'll benefit greatly from this. They cannot see us. We'll continue to prosper from their wars and deaths. War is a huge money maker. We will repeat this until our ultimate goal is achieved. We'll continue to make them live in fear and anger and give them images and sounds and use the tools we have to achieve this. That's called media. The tools will be provided by their work. It's truly their, so, yeah, so that's about it. That's all I got for you today. And, um, 
There's so much more I could continue talking about. So let's just remember a couple of things. Be prepared. Let us never be divided. Stay united. No shaming. Keep loving one another and keep talking. And be prepared. And some major shit may be coming this summer. So I hope that you'll have some extra propane on hand. Have extra. Get dehydrating some food or buy it from Cabela's. Order it online. It might taste like dog food, but it'll be better than starving to death. Um, yeah, if you uh, have the means, even if you're in a condo and you buy a couple of big, big pots and some dirt, you could grow some vegetables. Um, do what you can. Get to know your neighbors. Have a trade, whether that's helping teach or cut hair or fix a car or repair plumbing or repair a house. When shit hits the fan, we will all be depending on one another for those things. You know, I'm going to end with this. I'm, I'm not a big religious person. My religion is loving kindness. But time and time again, the prophecies from the Bible keep coming up. And it intrigues me because they talk about when the world is really in trouble, when it's all coming down and it's getting biblical, the borders will just collapse. Our lands will be flooded with strangers. There'll be violence and, and terror. And people will be crying out for help. And are we there yet? There, there's sort of a little thought I had on that now and I just lost it. Um, anyway, it'll really be about God though, won't it? And so I do believe, I we don't have evidence, just like this thing that we're all talking about. But I do, I really do believe that as the dark comes, that light will prevail. And the last people standing will create a new earth. I think a lot's gonna happen. And so I love you. I love us, I love our country. I sleep really well at night because I believe in the light. I believe in good. And I'm going on 55 this year and I've just had incredible 55 years. I was born into a beautiful family that I love. I've got great friends and I've had all these freedoms, but there's so many generations to come that haven't. And we need to just rise and stand and start whipping this thing off, get the diaper off our face and start pushing back. And I'm not sure I'm just not sure how that's all going to happen, but I think as it gets darker, people are seeing the light. So I hope I helped you see the light and I hope you still love me if I didn't, because I still love you. I think we've all been indoctrined for a long time. Uh, Eisenhower said this was coming in 61. You can look at it on uh, the our federal government website. There's a big conversation with him, him and Eisenhower. I read a lot. I ingest a lot. I'm just not really academic. I, I'm not, I don't, um, I'm not putting myself down. I just don't think that I'm really well versed in history or world politics. But I feel, I feel such an evil darkness coming at us. And I share that with so many people underground, like on the different YouTube channels and, um, news outlets that I watch. I'm not alone. There's millions of us. You just can't see that. You can't see it because it's not what the mainstream media wants, wants you to see right now. So I'm going to end on that. Sorry, this is really long. So I hope uh, you can catch up in the next week or two and I'll try and put out a fun Dear Diary story to counter all this doom and gloom. Okay, that's it. Have a great weekend. I'm going to.